Welcome to Pickleball Journey. Today we are talking about one of the most underused shots. When used correctly, it can be extremely effective. Let's get into it. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe below. Hey guys, welcome. We're going to jump right into some lobs. Uh, we're going to hit a few shots first, and then I'm going to try a surprise uh, lob Justin, um, and then we'll talk about it from there. Be sure to stay tuned to the end where we show how to return the lob. So you ever get in a dink battle cross court with someone, right? No one ever, it doesn't seem to end. We're just doing a really good job on both ends, going back and forth. And then I surprise lob him and try to get it right over his head cross court. There's a reason we like to go cross court when we're lobbing because it's the longest distance or the most space to hit into. When you go down the line, there's less distance and it's easier for them to get back to it. We never want to hit this super often, right? Uh, more when it's a, a surprise or when the, the dink battles are going crazy long. Um, but it's an advantage to have that in your belt um, or a, a tool to be able to lob that whenever you want. Or it keeps them guessing, it keeps them kind of off the kitchen line so that they never know when they're, you're going to throw in that lob. So a couple more here. So I'm going to keep them moving around, right? Try to keep them off the toes back and forth. I'm going to mix up our shots, right? And then pop it right over, drop right into that line there. So we don't want our lobs to be um, too high either, right? We want to get right over the, so if I have Justin reach as high as he can, we want to get right over that, maybe, you know, three feet higher because he's going to back up a few feet as well. We got to anticipate that. But if we leave it too high, he has time to move back and hit an overhead. So we want to get it just over his highest reach, but not too high. So he has time to step back and hit an overhead. If you're out with a friendly game with your grandpa, don't make him run all over the court and break a leg, right? You know, if you're in a competitive game, you know, go ahead. It, you know, every shot is available. Um, be, be a competitor and go out and try to get those extra points and take those advantages. All right, so we're going to do a couple more here. We're moving them side to side, try to get them out wide a little bit. Moving them around. Maybe the center. I don't know when am I going to do it. I'm looking here and then pop it right over his head, right? So you can do that either on the backhand side or the forehand side, but the key is mostly to get it cross court with that lobs because when we're going down the line, it's a lot easier for him to get back. Um, another thing we wanna look at when we're lobbing is Justin, he's a very athletic guy. He's very fast on the pickleball court and the tennis court. So he's gonna, he's gonna get back quickly. So when I'm considering lobbing, I'm considering the speed of my opponent as well. So I'm gonna rarely lob Justin because he's so quick and he has a great overhead. Um, but if I do, I'm gonna definitely use it sparingly. Now, if Justin was, you know, 500 pounds, that's a different story, he can't move as much, okay? And so I'm gonna maybe use that a little more often or move him around a little more often so that uh, it's an effective shot against him. I know there's a, some conception out there about you know whether it's um, a sportsman like or not. It is just another shot. So um, it, it's just another shot in pickleball. It's effective sometimes, and so use it because a variety creates um, points. All right. So one other thing when we're looking at the lob is uh, when you know when we're going cross court, we also you know want to stay away from the line a little bit, maybe a little bit more towards the center. The, it not only gives you some space um, from side to side, but it also gives you the ability to create confusion between your opponents, right? So, you know, if you hit that lob, so let's give an example here. So if we're dinking back and forth. Let's assume that Justin has a partner here and say I lob it. Uh, it's a little, let's do it one more time. It's a bad lob right there. Um, so we lob it right down the center, okay? Justin's coming to the center to try to get that maybe backing up and so is his partner so that maybe you're creating a little um, friction there between them two or miscommunication. That way we can maybe get a free point um, based off of the fact that they're miscommunicating. All right, so there's one other thing. You can lob off of the, the dink 
and you can also lob off of a volley as well. Sometimes that's even more deceiving because you're expecting a drive shot right at your body or something like that. Shout out to Carell. He does this really well and does it often. Um, he, he hits that the ball lob right over their head off of the volley, okay? So what that looks like is if, if uh, Justin hits a little too high, I just pop it right over his head. So we're say we're in a dink battle, he's hitting a couple good dinks, and then all of a sudden he pops it, I'm trying to get out of the air, he dinks it a little too high, and I just pop it right over. And it's a really quick nudge. They're expecting maybe a drive, but I, they're, you know, I don't do that, and then I pop it right over the head. Plus, it gets them a little frustrated. So you're playing a mental battle with them. Um, they kind of like get frustrated by the fact you didn't do what they were expecting. So now we're going to talk about how to return the lob. So really, the number one thing when returning the lob is taking your time. And so a lot of times we see people running back super fast and trying to hit this great shot. The important thing, as I mentioned, is to just take your time with it. So you really want to get back as you're returning the lob. You want to get back. And, and let the ball drop low and you're just you're patiently hitting that back nice and soft as a drop so you're trying we're aiming for the kitchen to get it back at the feet and reset so we're going to show some examples of this I'll, I'll show kind of what not to do but then how to do this uh, more slow patient shot to hit it correctly So that's what's not to do, even though that was a good shot. <laughs> we'll do one more, doing it incorrectly. Again. See how I'm, I'm rushing there, trying to do that too quick? We really want to take our time, let the ball come down. All right, so here we're going to do an example of this, letting the ball drop low. There we go. Now you get back into the point. We'll do that one more time. Same thing, getting here. See how you just take your time and you're, you're kind of scooping the ball. It's almost like a, you're coming back and you're scooping it up. So one thing to think about as you're hitting this, it's, it's similar to the third shot drop. So we want to make sure our weight is moving forward. We don't want to be hitting this too much as we're running back and the weight's falling backwards. But we want to get back, have, have our weight transitioning forward as we're hitting it. and you're right back into the point. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about a lob from the baseline. Um, this one's uh, difficult to do, but still same, you know, the same principle. We wanna be lobbing uh, cross court instead of down the line. Um, we can use the lob as a um, recovery, so give us time. So if uh, Justin hits a great smash and I'm off the court, you know, I can either try to get a drop going, which is very difficult on the run, or I can throw up a lob to just get myself back in the court um, because a lot of times it's hard to put away that overhead, um, especially if I get that lob deep enough. So what I'm going to show as an example, I'm going to give him a higher ball. He's going to smash it cross court at an angle. I'm going to try to lob that cross court just to get back into the point. Okay, so I'm going to give him that high ball. High ball again. Crushes it. It's a bad lob. I'm gonna try to lob it up again. Maybe drop it again. Good. Okay. Lob it up again. Yeah. Ah. Drop it. Ah. Nice. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Justin to get a little bit more of a smash because at this point when I'm still established here, I'm still gonna try to drop that unless I don't feel like I have enough control. So Justin's gonna hit it a little bit more off the court, so I have to run for it, and then I'm gonna be able to throw up that lob. So Justin, a little more wide. I'll lob it to get back in. So that's that's a good example to be able to reestablish myself. So I hit a bad drop, he smashes, and I lob it over. That was more of a down the line lob. One more time, I'll give him a high ball, smashes. Try to lob it up. Yeah, good. Nice. So just playing defense. Oh, sorry, wrong ball. Give him a high ball. Smash. Nice. So a lot of times you don't, it's, it's tough to, to block it in order to get that drop. So we just throw that ball up and try to get a lob going. Now, that
that's more of a defensive lob to try to reestablish ourselves. For an offensive lob, um, it's going to be, we need a surprise. So for example, um, if I get a ball that's maybe mid, uh, mid court and I look like I'm going to drop it and all of a sudden I pop it over his head, um, that would be more of an offensive lob. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit a drop, a good drop. He's going to hit a ball in. I'm coming a little bit closer. He's going to get about mid, I'm going to get a mid court or if, even if I had a good drive and it's about mid court. So I'm going to hit a good drive. He hits a mid court. I'm going to go offensive lob. Good drive, mid court, offensive, and then I get back into it.